Hi, we're going to talk about oxidation numbers and their rules. Let's start with the definition. <laughs> this is really interesting. Um, an oxidation number, let's read it together. The charge on an atom or ion, okay, great, the charge, or this is where you're gonna go, what? The charge on the atom or ion that appears, that it appears to have, and is based on these rules. So this is what I tell my students. Oxidation numbers are very closely re related to charges, but not 100%. Oxidation numbers are a convention that we have created as chemists to show us the number of electrons that are gained or lost as you change from reactants to products. So you're going to get some oxidation numbers that you go, really? There's no way that just gained six electrons, or there's no way that's a plus seven that it just lost seven electrons. You're right. It's not, um, but when you look at the change in oxidation numbers, that's 100% accurate based on what we've come up with these rules. So long story short, trust me, follow these rules um, and I promise it will make sense. We're just going to have to do it in a couple of, se uh, a couple of steps. So you're going to have right now on your brain that oxidation number is very similar to charges, but not 100%. This is a convention we've created to observe the change in electrons gained or lost as you go from reactants to products. So here are our rules. Um, number one, pure elements always have an oxidation number of zero. Uh, so pure elements, let's do a couple of examples. Take magnesium. Element all by itself, so that is an oxidation number of zero. Now notice how I wrote that. You're going to see me do this the entire unit. Always write your oxidation number small right above the atom. And it's because we are going to have so many numbers and labels and lines um, that to keep it straight, you want to put um, the oxidation number right above the atom. Let's do another one and don't be fooled by this one. How about chlorine? That is a diatomic element. It's the element by itself, but remember there are seven elements that when they're by themselves, they always bond to themselves and they have a buddy. That's diatomic elements. So this is also a zero because it's chlorine by itself. Now, just a reminder, there are seven diatomic elements. So if you see bromine, iodine, nitrogen, chlorine, hydrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. This is how I have my students memorize it. Brinkelhoff. Look at that again. Brinkelhoff. I tell my students, pretend that it's a girl's name in German. And if you speak German, I'm sorry, please don't be offended. <laughs> but hopefully this will help you remember it. Um, all seven of those elements when they're by themselves will have a subscript two because they bond to themselves for stability to have full octets. Um, so even our diatomic elements by themselves have an oxidation number of zero. Number two, super easy. The oxidation number on a monoatomic ion is always the same as the charge. It's equal to the charge. So a monoatomic ion, this just means one atom with a charge. So let's do a couple of these. Um, <clears throat> let's say that I have a sodium ion that has a plus charge, loses one electron to have a full octet. Therefore, its oxidation number plus one. So I write a plus one up top. Let's do another one. Let's say a sulfide ion. So I have sulfide, this is going to be a negative two charge. So its oxidation number is negative two. Okay, easy peasy. Um, fluorine, now um, these are written in a hierarchy um, that uh, as if one trumps the other one, and you'll see this as we keep going. Super important, fluorine always is a minus one. So when you see fluorine in a compound, first thing you write down is minus one above fluorine. Um, here would be an example, and trust me on this, you're going to see me do something new, but we'll do it several times and, and you'll get the pattern and the habit. Um, let's take a calcium fluoride, and I want to identify the oxidation numbers for the two atoms. Fluorine is always a minus one, okay? Now calcium, you'll see here in just a second, is a plus two. Now here's how you check it. When you add up the total oxidation numbers, they always have to equal the net charge of the entire compound. Well, this compound has no number right there, no charge. It has a net zero charge. And you know that with ionic compounds. The ionic compounds, um, our trick um, was crossing down charges because the uh, charges always have a net zero. So watch this, kind of cool. I have two fluorines. They each have an oxidation number of minus one. So I'm going to take minus one times two, 
And over here, my calcium was a plus two. So if we add this together, the plus two plus minus two times, um, or minus one times two, we get two minus two, what does that equal? Zero. And this net charge is zero. So it means that we get that right. Um, okay, let's keep going. So now we have oxygen. Oxygen in a compound is a minus two, and this is going to be 99% of the time. So oxygen is a minus two. Let's just stop there and let me show you an example. We're going to have water. Okay, let's do oxidation numbers. Oxygen is a minus two. Trust me on this, you'll see it in a second. Hydrogen is a plus one. So um, I do plus one times two because I've got two hydrogens, gives me a plus two. One oxygen, so one times minus two is minus two equals zero. And check it out, water's net charge is zero. Um, so oxygen is almost always a minus two. There's one exception. This is except in peroxides. Now, a peroxide, here's an example for you, H2O2. Um, so you want to have this memorized. Um, you could have a Na2O2. You could have a K2O2. Those are all peroxides. Um, in a peroxide, oxygen is a minus one. It's a minus one. So here's my minus one. Remember I said hydrogen is a plus one. So plus one times two is plus two. Minus one times two is minus two, and that equals zero, and that's a net zero. So oxygen is going to always be minus two, except in peroxides, it's a minus one. And of course, if um, you were uh, doing an AP chemistry or college chemistry, uh, professors love this. They, they love the exceptions. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm sorry, but they do love exceptions. Okay, number five. Chlorine, bromine, iodine are always going to be minus one, except um, with oxygen and with a fluorine. So let me give you an example. Let's take a hydrochloric acid, HCl. So chlorine minus one, hydrogen, you'll see it in a second, always a plus one. I have one and one, so plus one minus one equals zero. Yep, and that's a net zero right there. Now, I want to change this. Let's say that I have a um, hypochlorite, so a ClO minus. Ooh, I like this because you get to see something with a charge. So oxygen is a minus two, okay? Oxygen is a minus two. I've got one oxygen, minus two times one gives me minus two. I know this has to equal a minus one right there. So what number do I need right here to make that a true statement? It is going to be a plus one. So in this case, chlorine is a plus one. Chlorine is a, a plus one. Now, through the video, I could hear you inhale and gasp and go, wait a second, I don't understand. Um, I will give you We'll practice, watch the next video on practicing oxidation numbers. There's a hierarchy that you follow. Um, always do, as long as you see, okay, oxygen is not in a peroxide, always do oxygen first. Set all of your numbers equal to the net charge. In this case, it was a minus one. And then you'll have one element that you have to figure out mathematically, okay? Um, so it's not even that you have to memorize this so much as no, you will write the oxidation number for fluorine and or oxygen first, and then you figure out the other oxidation number. You'll see me do it. So hold on, I promise you'll get it. I promise you'll get it. Uh, this next one, pretty easy. Groups uh, one and two, their oxidation number is the same as their charge. Um, so group one, let's take potassium. Its charge is a plus one. It loses one electron to have a full valence. Um, shell and so its oxidation number is plus one. Uh, let's take strontium. Strontium's charge is a plus two, so what's its oxidation number? Plus two. So that you can take to the bank. Okay, that you can take to the bank. All right, number seven, hydrogen. Hydrogen is always a plus one except in hydrides. A hydride is when you have hydrogen plus a metal. Um, let's first start with uh, just hydrogen. You've actually seen two examples. Let me do another example for you. Um, let's take a hydrosalinic acid, okay? So we have an H2SE, H2SE. Um, hydrogen is always a plus one charge, okay? 
Um, what's my net charge right here? Do you see a number? No? So we know that net charge is zero. So let's figure this out. Plus one times two is a plus two, plus some number right here, oxidation number for selenium, has to equal zero, because the net charge is zero. <clears throat> that means selenium must be a minus two. And that is correct, that is correct. Okay, um, now, the exception, hydrates. Hydrates are going to be, again, hydrogen with a uh, metal. Uh, let's take a lithium hydride. So we're gonna have LiH. In this case, look right here, hydrogen is a minus one. So you've got your minus one. Lithium, you'll recall, is a group one. It has a plus one charge, plus one. Well, let's do the math on this. I've got one lithium times plus one, one hydrogen times minus one, one plus minus one equals zero. And the net charge on that is zero. Um, okay, now the last one, and you've actually seen me do this like five times. The sum of all the oxidation numbers in a compound equals the net charge of that compound. Um, I want to do two examples with you. Let's take, um, let's see here. Let's do a potassium oxide. Now notice this is not a peroxide. It would have a two right here if it's a peroxide. It would, like, it would look like the H2O2, but this is just H2O. This is a regular oxide, okay? Um, okay, let's follow my rule. So I always do oxygen first. This is a minus two. Potassium is a group one metal, so its oxidation number is the same as its charge. It will be a plus one. Okay, now let's do the math. Plus one times two gives me a plus two. Minus two times one gives me a minus two, and that equals plus two minus two, zero. And the net charge on this is zero. So your oxidation number for potassium, again, plus one oxygen minus two. Now let's do one that's an ion, kind of like what you saw over here with that, with that hypochlorite. Uh, let's do a nitrate. So we're gonna have NO3, sorry, that's kind of a sloppy N. We'll clean it up just a little bit. Um, NO3 minus one. Okay, oxygen, remember we always do that first. So that's going to be a minus two. Now I didn't give us any rules for nitrogen, which means we're going to have to figure this out. Um, so I'm going to have some number right here for nitrogen. Minus two times three gives me minus six, and that has to equal a minus one. So mathematically, what number do I need right there for this to be a true statement? Plus five, plus five. So five minus six gives me a minus one. That's a plus five. Okay, now I love this example because it comes back to this word up here. If we were just doing charges and I'd say, hey, what's the charge of nitrogen? You'd say, oh, it's a minus three. It gains three electrons. I'd say, bingo, you're right. Gains three electrons. This looks like it's losing five. And you're going, really? You're right. You really, it's not going to. But this is an oxidation number, okay? It's not a charge, it's an oxidation number. That is correct. That is 100% correct. Because now we can look at nitrate going from reactants to products. Watch that nitrogen and we'll see that it gains or loses electrons. Um, so that is correct. Don't let it throw you. We're doing oxidation numbers. They're related to charges but not 100%. Okay, so there are the rules. Now we need practice. So please look at the Redox playlist, um, and I want you to watch the next video that is practicing writing oxidation numbers. And we'll, I'm gonna give you a hierarchy, kind of a, a laundry list of do this, do this, do this, do this, um, and you'll be able to find any oxidation number. Okay, great, good work, have a nice day, thanks.